Okay, we'll call this regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to order. It is Thursday, January 27th, 2022, 6.30 p.m. Uh, we'll call the roll. Ben. Here. Mike. Here. Jason. Here. Paul. Here. Ruth. Here. We saved the best for last. <clears throat> Uh, approval of the minutes. Well, oh, I'm sorry. We have an excused absence with Joe for this time around. Joe Carroll. Thank you. Uh, approval of the minutes from last month. Anyone want to move on that one? Motion to approve. Thank you, Ben. Second. Thank you, Paul. Okay, any additions, subtractions, corrections? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed, thank you. Superintendent's report, Dave, you are up. Okay, a copy of the uh, monthly report of operations for the month of December is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.44 million gallons per day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 96% BOD removal 
and 99% total suspended solids removal for concentrations of 9 and 4 milligrams per liter, respectfully. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of December is included in your packet. The cause of the erratic flows from pump station 26 uh, continue to be due to construction activities there. Attached is the annual uh, summary of our operations. Last year, we treated 509 million gallons of wastewater, from which we removed 96% and 99% of the BOD and TSS. A summary of the past years is provided in that table. From that, I, uh, I calculated the cost of conveying and treating of wastewater last year, uh, which averaged less than one cent per gallon. This is based on the total flow treated and our total budget, including operations, debt service, and capital expenditures. Sludge hauling report um, in 2021, we continue to haul our dewatered sludge off site. Um, so we, we uh, disposed of a total of 2,038 wet tons at a cost of 178 thousand dollars and, and past years are there for comparison also. Um, this past year we've had a total of eight events of plugged pumps at our pump stations, three of which were attributed to wipes. At one point in time wipes were a uh, significant problem. They have, uh, have um, are not as much. I, uh, my guess is that's primarily due to education. We reached out to three dealers for each truck bid for the two trucks that we were, are replacing this year. The results are summarized below. Truck 47 will have a utility body uh, lift crane in, uh, installed, and lift crane installed uh, by Hughes Truck Bodies and Equipment. So for the uh, inspector's truck, it, it's gonna be a uh, GMC 1500 double cab. Um, winning bid was Bill Dodge and the bid price came in at 38135 And for truck 47, uh, which is uh, the collection system truck, it's going to be a Ford F550. Uh, this price is for the cabin chassis, um, and that's going to Casco Bay Ford, and its price is $47,128. Um, Knowles Industrial Solution has started painting the floors in the blower building pump room. Uh, last year, the end of last year, they finished, they uh, completed the upper level, as you may recall. This year, we joined the Southern Maine Sludge Consortium, Consortium, which consists of 13 wastewater treatment facilities that joined together to go out to bid for sludge disposal. Two bids were received. Casella Organics is the low bidder at $114 per ton. Our current costs are $87.36 per ton. Our current rate is good through all of 2022. The new rate will go into effect um, in January of 2023. With the concerns around PFAS and cost of sludge disposal, um, this increase was uh, expected. Uh, uh, with the surge of the new uh, variant, COVID variant, um, the Scarborough Sanitary Logistics has had some impact on staffing. We had three staff members test positive and one was a close contact exposure. We have been following the most recent CDC guidelines regarding um, uh, return to work. We've, have, we've been having some significant delays uh, with receiving mail as our, as have our uh, customers. Many have gone and come in saying that they are getting their bills after the due date or not at all. This has significantly impacted our cash flow. Although not a problem yet, it does have the potential of becoming one. We, we have been in communication with the Postal Service and we've um, stated uh, that the lack of staff in COVID has been the uh, cause. We actually went a full week without receiving any mail. We actually, we finally got some mail on Saturday. Stack this high. Uh, I've been summoned for jury duty. Um, the term is January 31st through March 4th. Um, if selected, I'll be notified which days I have to attend. So I'll be, sporadically in and out. I'll be in close contact with Josh and Wendy to keep that uh, together. 
I do want to uh, uh, bring up a couple other items with regards to budget. Uh, we just received the um, the bid prices for chemicals. We we joined in on the Southern Maine uh, chemical bid bid process. Um, there have been some dramatic increases in cost. Uh, sodium hypochlorite uh, or bleach, as uh, uh, people will know it as, um, has actually. The bid price came in at 80% higher from last year's price. So it's a significant increase. Um, caustic soda has gone up 42%. Um, mag hydroxide, 7.5%. Polymer, we're, we're still waiting, but we're looking at probably a 25% increase. Uh, those uh, supply chain issues are also impacting uh, equipment. Uh, Cola Generator has actually just come back to us and said on one of our um, generators that we ordered that due to cost increases, that generator bid price is going to kind of increase another $5,000. Uh, and that is it that I have on that. Cool. Any questions for the superintendent? I have a couple. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, Who is currently handling our sludge? Casella. It is Casella. Yeah. Okay. So that rate's gone up significantly. When did we sign that? The the current contract? Yeah. Two years ago. It was two years ago. It was a three-year term. Okay. Gotcha. And the other quick question I have was just uh, noticed on the news tonight that the CDC was uh, soliciting help from several wastewater treatment facilities for COVID testing. Have we received any? No, we are not one that? of them. It's uh, primarily, and I looked at the list, it's uh, Portland, I believe, is the most southern treatment plant that's involved in it, and then it's north of Portland. North of there. Okay. Now, we would have been fine helping out, but they just never, didn't reach out to us. Right. Thank you. Any other questions for the superintendent? All right, none. Moving on to correspondence, we have none. Yes, we do. Oh. I had asked uh, for a... Sorry, you're right. My, my, my apologies. Suspension of the rules. Yeah, motion, uh -huh. motion to suspend the rules to add the audit engagement letter as an agenda item. Is that the correct procedure? Yep. Uh, somebody's got a... Ruth said second. Okay. Cool. We're going to add it. So uh, we need a vote. All in favor? So we added it. Go for it. What is it all about? Uh, it's just the normal um, uh, confirmation that we are soliciting, or not soliciting, um, uh, utilizing Willette and Associates to conduct our annual audit, which will be on February... The holiday, which is 21st of February. 21st of February, so this coming month. Um, it's, yeah, that's Washington's it's, birthday, right? Yeah. It's the, the normal uh, uh, letter that comes out with that every year. I'm okay. just I'm supposed to provide it to you. Um, as always, once the audit is done and returned to us, they will provide a presentation to board to, um, uh, for you to ask questions. Usually that is either in March or April. It's typical time frame. Cool. Okay, no other correspondence, right? Nope. Uh, old business, we have none. New business, Prout Neck Conservancy Proposal to Control Invasive Plants. Um, let's see. One second. <clears throat> let's see uh, Marvin Gates, president of the Prout Neck Conservancy, has requested approval from the Scarborough Sanitary District to conduct some invasive plants control work on the southwest corner of the uh, Scarborough Sanitary District property, which is uh, basically between us and the golf course. And um, this work will be overseen by a licensed arborist, ar arborist and herbicide applicator. Um, they're working mostly on the golf course, but as he described, invasive plants do not see property boundaries. So he'd like to be able to cross over and uh, eradicate um, as they see fit. So I recommend approval of this proposal. I'll entertain a motion. 
Motion to approve. Thank you. Ruth. Second. Paul. Second for Paul. All right. Uh, questions, discussion? Quick, quick question. Are, yes. Are we, uh, have we notified our insurance company if people are going to be performing work on our property? Is that a concern? Uh, I can. I have not. You know, I will reach out to them. I don't know them. what this entails. It wasn't really well spelled out exactly what they'd be doing in the proposal. Yeah. But I don't expect it's a high risk, but maybe something we just want to be cognizant of if we don't know. We don't have control over who's going to be on our property. Then yep. Maybe something to be to notify our insurance company. Of. Now, that brings up an interesting point. Normally, when we have contractors come on site, they provide proof of liability insurance, correct? Yes. Right. But they are our contractors. These guys are our contractors. Can we ask them for liability insurance? Uh, yes, we can. Just a thought. Those type of questions, I would suspect our insurance agent would, mm. would uh, advise us on what we need to ask for and the levels of insurance that we should be asked. Cool. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, let's call a vote for bye bye invasive plants. All in favor? None opposed. Budget summary. Uh, Attach is your 12 month budget summary. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, um, if I find it, is that, oh yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> typically, every year we usually transfer $425,000 at the line item in our budget into the um, fixed asset account. Um, at the same time, we had uh, we have uh, expenditures coming out of the fixed asset account that would be transferred um, once we expend them out of our operation budget. Those funds that got transferred from fixed asset into the uh, into the operations budget. So uh, we had four hundred twenty-five thousand uh, for the fixed asset trans for transfer, but we had six hundred and seventy-six thousand being transferred back in. So that's why. None of those uh, monies were expended. So mm -hmm. that works. Any questions about the budget budget summary? Actually, I'd like a motion to approve first. Then we can discuss. Motion to approve. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Ben. Now, do we have any questions for the superintendent? All right, barring none, all in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Okie dokies. We have public comments. Anyone from the public? Please step to the podium and state your name. Good evening. Hi, some of you, and I don't know if you just might tell me your name. Um, I don't know if that's okay, because I, I reached out to a couple of you, and I actually don't know who I reached out to by face. Sure. Uh, I'll introduce the board again. Thank you. On, our, for our, on my far right, your far left, there's Ruth Summers, Paul Rodriguez, Hi. Jason Greenleaf. We have Ben McDougall and Mike Stein, and I'm Nick Rico. Yeah, cool. Thank you. So I had reached out to Jason and also Joe Carroll back in probably December, and obviously, and um, you spoke uh, to with me once. Yes. And um, so to circle around, I think I've had a lot of odor issues at my location where I am located up on the hill on on ninety on Pine Point Road. And um, I think what so I've gotten used to smelling fish at my house, coming from the sewer, coming from the line. There's a long history. We don't need to get into it. Um, I reached back out to your board after uh, one of the captains from the fire department came out to my house and was very alarmed by the smell of methane one day. And so I kind of circled around and spoke to a couple of people. And at that point, I'd reached out to Jason, who I did not hear back from. I reached out to Joe Carroll, who did not, re who did not return my call. They were firefighters. I felt like they might be the first person to reach out to, to talk to about, 
to correlate between the concerns the firefighters were telling me and what's going on with the sanitary district. I reached out to Nick, um, and Nick and I had a great conversation about what you guys are doing down there. Um, my understanding, Nick, is that you do the same sort of, you're a, you do the same thing as Dave down in Wells, is that correct? Some of the same things, yes. Right, yeah, okay. And so, um, you know, I just, I'm kind of at the point where it doesn't seem appropriate for these smells to be going on like that, so I kind of did a little more research. One of the things that Nick had suggested I do is I call a plumber. So I did call a plumber, which is fine. However, the smell was never in my house. The smell was coming from the street, and the fire department made it very clear it was not coming from my house. So while I appreciate the feedback, it seemed like I was just kind of, it was going through the motions where, you know, I mean, I did have a plumber come out and he just was like, there's nothing wrong with your system. Um, and so I just want to clarify that I did have a plumber come out. I've had a contractor at my house already. Um, and so I reached out to, probably four years ago, I dealt with the DEP who helped us deal with some of the smells that we were experiencing before. So I reached back out to them, and I guess they have a new guy in charge named Fred Gallant, who is the liaison for you now. And he just, I don't know, maybe he was a lot more knowledgeable or good at communicating because the information he gave to me was 10 times better than any of the information I had gotten in the last five years. And so I think tonight, one of the questions I had or information I'd like, and actually feedback from the board is, have you heard of these things? Are you familiar with what Portland's doing? Because really what we're smelling and the issues that we're dealing with is the fish processing plants. Um, no one can explain why after the pot plant went in, I was getting the pot fumes up through, this, through, the, through your system. Not making it up, we really were. People were smelling it, it was strong. I have no idea how that happens, but it was. It doesn't anymore. But so I was talking to Fred Gallant of the DEP who is in charge of Portland. And I just said, you know, what is Portland doing? And so I, I reached out to Dave very briefly and asked a couple quick questions and tell me if I remember correctly. One of the things that they said they do in Portland is they have a sewer use ordinance, which specifically outlines what type of uses are allowed. So people aren't questioning, is this allowed, is this allowed? Um, Portland specifically lists out in their ordinance what type of uses are allowed and what isn't allowed. What is allowed to be dumped, what isn't allowed to be dumped. And my understanding, Dave, is Scarborough does not do that. Is that correct? That's correct because we're, uh, we don't have the industrial users that Portland, Portland has. Does. We're okay. a different system. Yep. So that, I can appreciate that. We're a smaller town. And so the other thing, one of the things that I feel like the biggest issue that we're having at Pine Point and one of the biggest things that Portland deals with is, is all the fish processing plants. When I spoke to him, he was saying down on Commercial Street, they have like about 23 fish processing plants. And any type of commercial business that wants to use the district in Portland has to sign a pre-treatment use agreement. My understanding is Garbo does not do that. No. And my understanding is there is no sort of pre-treatment uses that you guys are implementing at all in any sort of commercial uses. And so first, big ask, I think you guys should be doing that. I think you've had residents coming here for years complaining about the smells. In my conversations with Nick, it seems like you guys are trying to update the system in Pine Point to accommodate more users instead of what I have consistently been asking for since I started coming here is I'm saying regulate your users. Mm. Stop, stop letting more users come on and why don't we start regulating the users more? Because when you're in Portland, I've worked on Commercial Street, I know Jason works down in the old port, we're not smelling that. I've never heard of people complaining. I feel like it would be in the news just like it was in Scarborough when people were experiencing those smells. Portland has a lot more experience with fish processing plants. My, I don't understand how, and you can explain to me, and I think some people would like to know, how it would hurt you guys to say to your users, we want you to be on a pretreatment plan and further make them accountable in processing and using the things more. Well, My, can, yep. can I clarify? Absolutely. It wasn't that we're doing things on Pine Point to accommodate new users. What we're doing is upgrading a pump station that's 40 years old and needs to be upgraded. Right. It, it doesn't need to be upgraded to add flow to it. It's just to take care of the flow we already get. We yep. need to change out those pumps. So it's just outdated. Which are outdated. Yep. Dave has gone above and beyond to remove or at least tamp down on odors there when the fish processing plant was there. What I'm happy about is that they're not there any longer. So hopefully you're not getting those odors anymore. Um, but 
we do have a marijuana processing facility down there. So maybe some of the odors you're getting are from there. Um, the other thought that I had is it's too bad the plumber was there when there were no odors. There, well, the contractor was. And I mean, that's honestly, so Captain Granada was going to come tonight. He had another obligation. He was the one who lives on the street from me, showed up at my house, another firefighter, Andy something, Merchant Marine, he's not here. So neither of them come. I'd ask them to come tonight to kind of explain to you guys, like some of the smells are above and beyond what anyone should ever have to experience. I also think it's concerning as a resident. You guys are all elected officials. People are complaining about smells. And when my understanding is Captain Granada reached out to Dave and your department that day. No one actually came to my house. They drove by it. They may have gotten out of their car for a second. I think you should have come up to my house. You should have come up and smelled it like you did four or five years ago because what they experienced was completely different. I mean, flat out, I have a text from Darren Granada saying that was methane smells coming from your house. It was not good. Um, actually, somebody did come out. Right, they did. Well, I watched them, Dave, and I have security cameras, and I watched them pull up to the fire hydrant next to my house, get out for a second, circle around. They didn't come onto the property. The firefighters were coming up to the back of my, like, hill in the back of my yard where it gets really high, and they're smelling it. And so it wasn't coming from my house. And I think that's where there's a disconnect. And it's like, you know, it's, it's not coming from my house. It's not coming from my house. Um, and so it's, it smells like fish all the time. And so I think at this point, I'd like to know if there's a way to make it so if I'm sitting in my back, in my hot tub on my back porch, I'm not smelling fish. I feel like people who live in Portland are not sitting in their backyard smelling the fish processing plant the way that I am and some of the other residents are. That's what's confusing to me, that there's no more fish processing down on Pine Point any longer. The other thing that... So I guess I'm, I'm generalizing the smell that I'm getting. Okay. So the other thing is, you know, without getting too technical and in the, too deep into this, part of it could be the venting of your individual sewer service through the roof of your house. So we've been over this, and I'm going to stop you right there, Nick. It's not. I've had contractors out. It's not just that. When I'm getting the same smell from my house that's coming out from the sewer line in front of my house, I don't think it matters. I think you indicated in our conversation that it was the odor was inside your garage at the time when you called me. I'm going to stop you there again. No, I'm saying it's outside and it's permeating from outside into my house because right. it was so strong. And one thing that I was hoping to explain is whenever you have a building, commercial or home, there is a 10-foot envelope of air. So if anything is vented within the envelope from the roof, it will settle all around the house. Unless you get that air out beyond that 10 foot envelope, it's still gonna sit around. So if any odors are coming from the vent, they will go down around the side of your house by your porch. And if you have a low vent, like uh, I do on one of my, on my laundry room, it's on the garage roof, it is low. And if I have any odors, that's where it's gonna come from. So with that being said, I have to say, I reached out to you as a representative, and every time I talk to you, Nick, I feel like I'm talking to Dave Hughes. <laughs> I'm looking to you guys, and you're elected officials, you're my representatives. Does someone want to come out to my house and smell it? Would some, one of the women that was here before actually came out, and she was like, oh my God, four years ago, she came out. That's kind of what I'm coming here tonight. I've reached out to some of you, no one's getting back to me. I understand all that. I have the fire department and your own department's telling me to call the fire department. And I think that's wrong to be using our resources when I'm saying there's a bigger issue going on here. The fact that I'm, there's better regulations going on in Portland and I understand that you want to seclude this just to my house. I, I'm a user and I'm getting smells. They're coming from the sewer in front of my house and they're coming from all over. When the fire department came out that day, they said it smells like methane and it smelled like methane not just in my yard. They walked to the neighbor's yard. So I guess I can appreciate that maybe some of what I'm experiencing maybe is what Nick's saying, but I'm saying I think it's more than that. And I'm asking you guys to maybe regulate the users better. I just, every day it smells and I don't understand why. Um, Are there smells today? When I walked out, I have a smell and I'm pulling out of the driveway and I just don't know what the deal is. And I don't, especially in the winter. And I've, I, in my conversations with the DEP and you, I started to understand the flow patterns and why it smells more and things like that. So I'm not gonna get into that. 
So I guess today what I was requesting and asking is for you guys to really hear kind of what I've been experiencing since I've really lived in that house. And I think what I can say is this wasn't happening six years ago. And so I think that's where I keep turning to you going, what's changed? What's happened? Why isn't this? So when you're saying we're spending all this money to upgrade the system, I'm like, well, is there something wrong with the system? Are you overloading it? I guess you're not. So I'm saying maybe you have a couple users who are dumping. I mean, obviously someone dumping some, dumped something that day when those fire departments showed up. That was really bad, and it wasn't just my house. Um, and so I don't know if it's reasonable to say why can't we implement pretreatment programs for some of these bigger commercial users. Fred Gallant from the DEP specifically said, I will work with you guys. We'll get you a better ordinance that's tighter, better regulations, help you with pretreatment programs. Again, none of this I would feel like would, implement, would like hurt your income or anything. It's just kind of regulating the systems better. It just seems a little loose, and I can understand that we are somewhat of a residential community, and um, I just didn't know if that was possible. Are so, any other neighbors experiencing this too? So, and that's why I really wish, I wish I knew Andy's last name. Andy's on the fire department as well. He showed up that day with uh, Captain Granada. He lives on like the Iris Drive near the other side, and he was saying, I still smell it. <laughs> He's like, it's not as bad as it was, and it wasn't. I didn't, I didn't bug you guys for years because the big smells disappeared, and I just kept smelling little bits, little bits. And then I think, honestly, seeing the reaction of the fire department and my neighbor being like, this is not okay. This is not good. This is not okay. That's kind of why I'm freaking out because, I mean, they're literally like, when the contractor from Southern Maine Home Remodeling was like, you need to call 911 right now. I was like, uh, okay. I was like, I get smells all the time. He's like, this is not normal. He's like, your neighbor might have a gas leak at this point. And I think maybe I've become accustomed to some of it. And I just, you know, I spoke to the chief of the fire department and he gave me a, you know, a rundown of all the calls that they've gotten for smells that turn out to be the sewer. Um, it seems like maybe there's somewhat of a disconnect there and I'm not sure. But, um, you know, and that's fine. And I don't know what the neighbors are saying. If you, if I elected officials want me to go, have to go bang on doors, and if you guys want me to get more people, I guess that's what we can do. Um, I just kind of wanted to see if you guys would be willing to maybe step it up and come on more in line with maybe the way that Portland is. The DEP is a free service. They literally said they want to help you. I don't see why not. Um, is Joe Carroll here tonight? No. Joe Carroll is not here tonight. He had an excused absence. I think that was from the very beginning of the meeting. You hadn't been in the room by that time. Yeah, I apologize. Um, just, you know, I will say a pretreatment ordinance doesn't necessarily address odors. It, it, it addresses what comes down the pipe and what may affect the wastewater and the treatment system. You know, it's not an end all be all. Right, and I guess my only experience is Reedy Seafood, who was doing exactly that. And it, my, in my layman's interpretation is you put it them onto a pretreatment program and they had to put a whole system in and they're gone anyways. But, um, and you know, and that's, that I understand. Right. I understand that you don't regulate smells. I understand what I'm saying and what I've said to the DEP is smells come from somewhere. And what I'm saying is please regulate where, what that something is. And we, I think my experience is I saw Reedy specifically doing exactly kind of the same smells and situation that we're dealing with today. It's, I don't know what's going on there. It seems like there's more industrial business going on there. I mean, Scarborough's just exploding. Um, you know, I just joined the planning board. I don't know if the planning board can be like, hey, <laughs> we want you to put a free treatment plan on this because you're going to open a fishing processing plant down in Pine Point. I don't think so. That seems a bit extreme. But I just, you know, I don't know. And I, I honestly feel like a lot of the neighbors are just used to the smell. Uh, question. Yeah. I'm curious. Uh, as to what method you used to reach out to myself and Joe, because I, I know we corresponded at one point back yep. in November, December-ish, about you had questioned about methods of contact and... I, uh, I texted you and I said, do you have an email I can send an email to? And I didn't get back, which is fine. Oh. And then I left Joe a voicemail um, because he was a firefighter. And I just kind of was trying to correlate between what the firefighters are saying and someone who sits on this board and maybe could maybe calm me down. I mean, when your own firefighters are like, this is not good, you need to call 911. When contractors are coming over and they're like, you need to call 911, I'm like, okay. So those are my concerns. Um, I would 
appreciate. I would love to speak to someone about it. I think one of the questions I had asked Nick when I spoke to him on the phone, thank you again for taking all the time, was when all the neighbors came out here four years ago and complaining, and Dave comes to you guys and he says, oh, we're getting odor complaints. We're getting a massive odor complaints from Pine Point. I said to Nick, did anyone on the board reach out to any of those neighbors? And they didn't. No, but... Uh, and, I, and that's just... You know, you know I, that's, I'm trying to correlate between that, where you're an elected official, you have a bunch of people complaining. I think they don't know how to get in contact with you because, you know, the, the phone numbers maybe aren't the best thing on the website. You know, some, I think a lot of the other elected officials have email addresses. Um, I, you guys could all be home right now and I could have emailed you two months ago. <laughs> so, um, so that's maybe just one thing. Just to point uh, out one thing about six years ago, there were many neighbors complaining, and I know that Dave had implemented a lot of odor detection measures, odor minimization measures. There, there have been hundreds of thousands of dollars spent on equipment just in Pine Point alone right. to try to tamp down these odors. So why weren't there, why, what is, why are the odors at issue now? And we, I don't, That's honestly, a great I, question. Well, I, I don't want to keep you guys here all night. I know you have a light agenda. I can appreciate this, but I think these are the questions I'm asking you. And I, I kind of like some answers, to be honest, like, I'm not going to go away. It kind of smells. And I feel like this is something that we need to have a conversation about and keep talking about, because I think it can be better. I don't think it needs to be this bad. Um, and I think maybe there could be better communication between you and the residents, you know, honestly, five years ago. The residents were on that neighbor app complaining, complaining, complaining. It wasn't until I got on there and I said, do you guys know you can go to this meeting? That's where there's a disconnect. So Dave is taking all these complaints but not saying, you should show up here. And I think maybe I'm asking a little bit more of you guys to maybe get involved, respond to the calls, maybe have email addresses, make it a little bit more accessible. If you're getting lots of odor complaints from a certain area, maybe you go smell it, check it out. Um, and. Uh, I guess that's probably about it for now, but um, I would appreciate maybe being able to speak with some of you if you're interested. I'll have email, I can reach out to Dave, but um, again, Fred Gallant from the DEP said he would be willing to work with you guys. I really hope that that's something you'll think about and take him up on. Well, Frank's already been invited down to our plan. Yeah. You know, I'll probably I've never met the man. He, he just recently took on that role, and I reached yeah. out to him that week. Yeah, he said he was, like, brand new and totally just still getting acclimated, but he was full of information, which I truly appreciated because I feel a lot more knowledgeable kind of about, like, what's, what's going on here. Um, cool. So anyway, <clears throat> thank you guys for your time. Thanks. I, I would like to address one more thing regarding emails. And Dave and I, we, we talked about that and points of contact, and we had... We, milled this or kicked this around several times about yep. regarding email and district business and being conducted meetings behind the meeting or after the meeting and that not being a good idea or advice from our legal counsel. Correct. The, the, and, and, you know, I do understand, understand and appreciate that, you know, the town deals with it differently, but the, 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 the district's board has decided actively, um, even, recently because it was brought up uh, to not have email addresses out there just phone numbers if somebody wants to email they can email the district directly and it will be dis disseminated appropriately um, and um, that way for Freedom of Information Act it's a lot easier to, to manage yeah, is everybody's phone number on the website that might be a question for you Wendy it's it is okay. All right. I just want to make sure that we have at least one method of contact. On. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's good. I just wanted to address that because I, I didn't realize it was an issue getting in touch with with folks. Um, and you know, I certainly apologize for not getting back to you. I do get text messages sometimes. I don't know where who they're from. So. If they, wasn't uh, and plus I lost all my contacts not long ago, so I'm without uh, without some information that I used to have. So I do apologize if anybody's tried to reach out to me, other than my home phone number that I didn't get back to you.
All right. I think we'll move on to trustee comments. We'll start over here on the left side, Ben. All right. Uh, <clears throat> nice uh, end, end of year budget looked good and nice, nice monthly report. It seems like things are going relatively well. And uh, thanks to the thanks to all the staff for doing a nice job. Mike. Uh, thank you. Yep. Uh, here it is. First month of what 2022. And um, I agree with with what um, Ben says, you know, it looks like we're off to a good start and um, sure it'll continue going through the rest of the year. Cool. Okay, son. Just uh, like to thank the staff. I know uh, we've had uh, some COVID outbreaks down at the plant, but everybody seems to be teaming up and working through the issues of resource constraints and other things and uh, doing a fine job and keeping up with the workload. So appreciate everybody's efforts there. Cool. Paul. I just also wanted to give a shout out to the staff and just one number that jumped out at me. Um, from this year, 99% TSS removal for the year. That's a tremendous number and a, and a 10 year low. And that's that's thanks to all the hard work the staff does every day. So just wanted to give a shout out. Thanks. Ruth. I just again, thank you all for all of your hard work that you do to make this meeting possible. Thank you for coming in and sharing your thoughts and um, I've been here long enough that I recognized you when you walked in, so I knew exactly why you were here. And um, knowing the professionalism of the people who are at this table, um, I'm fairly certain that um, a discussion will ensue, at least with the board members. So we do appreciate you coming forward. Um, I do know, though, that any time that I've communicated with them, it's been pretty quick and pretty direct. So um, I think you're in good hands, and uh, I think that they'll probably do the best that they can. So I thank the board for always being um, honest and straightforward with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Um, I'll echo my fellow trustee comments. Thank you, Karen, for coming in. I appreciate that, too. Uh, condolences to Joe Carroll on lo losing his uncle, which is one of the reasons he hasn't been able to attend tonight. Um, I guess that's it. I'll entertain the final motion of the evening. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Mike. All in favor? None opposed? We're done. Thank you.